Okay, hi there, welcome back. So in our next video, we're going to take a few minutes to just think about another component of demand. A key aspect of demand for goods and services is the level of investment spending in the economy. Examples of capital investment, capital expenditure include spending on machinery and equipment, for example, robotics, integrated plants to encourage mass production, machine tools, uh, software would be included, hardware, uh, logistics uh, equipment, you know, from container ships to trucks to aircraft, and also crucially things like infrastructure to, uh, to provide us with the power, the transport and the energy and the other utilities that we need. So investment, of course, is buying, spending on capital goods, capital accumulation, adding to the stock of capital to produce other goods and services in the economy. Now, there's a key distinction between gross investment. Gross investment is the total amount that an economy spends on new capital. Uh, gross investment includes an estimate for the value of what's called capital depreciation. You see, every year we need some investment simply just to replace machinery, technology, bits of kit that have become worn out through use or and or technologically obsolete. So there is always some capital depreciation included in gross investment, net investment for an economy, for a country, net investment is gross investment minus capital depreciation. So if gross investment is bigger than replacement investment, then net investment will be positive. Businesses and the economy as a whole will have more capital an increase in productive capacity and therefore can potentially meet increasing demand in the future. A few figures for investment, just to give you a feel for the data. This data is in real terms, already adjusted for inflation. Business investment, typically around £200 billion a year or around £4 billion a week is the scale of business investment. Uh, modest changes from year to year from the period 2016 through to 2019. The government is also an investor, be it Crossrail or New Bridges, the NHS building programme, for example. And the government spends just over a billion pounds a week on investment. If you add those two together, you get total gross investment. Now, 2020 is a difficult year for the economy, as I'm sure you know. The impact of coronavirus, the pandemic, the lockdown, second shutdown, for example. The data suggests that investment in the UK is going to be much lower this year. Business investments fallen by 18% forecast. Government investment down by 7%. In 2021, it looks as if investment will pick up, rise by 6.5% by businesses, although not back to the level it was once at. Can you see 175 is well below 200? Government investment is forecast to rise quite strongly. There's quite a few infrastructure projects that are forecast to really pick up the pace uh, into 2021. So that could be a key part of the aggregate demand story next year. I'm, I'm recording this in November 2020. Thinking about investment, uh, what are the main factors influencing planned investment by business? Well, there are many factors. I'm just going to pick out four for you. One is demand. Clearly, if you're a business, if you're a mobile phone company, for example, and you expect the amount of traffic to go up on your systems, you're going to need to invest to increase the bandwidth and the supply side capacity. If you're a house builder, expecting to sell lots of new homes, you're going to have to invest in capital goods. If you're a business like Zoom with many, many more millions of users or Netflix or Amazon Prime or Disney Plus, if actual and expected demand is strong on your forecast, that tends to cause higher investment because you want to have the supply side capacity to be able to meet demand. Linked with that is the expected profit and the post-tax profit from that investment. So things like corporation tax in different countries can have quite a significant effect on planned investment. Oftentimes, companies borrow money 
to finance investment. So the level of interest rates on loans, for example, corporate bonds, and the availability of business finance, can you get the loan you need for that new bit of kit? That has quite a big effect. And linking all of these together is business confidence or Keynesian animal spirits. Investment is risky, uncertain returns, oftentimes quite expensive, commitment financially is quite large. You're not going to go ahead with an investment project unless you have sufficient confidence about the future, unless your animal spirits are sufficiently robust. Key exam point, really key exam point, definitely worth noting, planned investment. What businesses plan to spend on new machinery, a new factory, new technology, tends to rise when firms expect increasing demand and, crucially, they have limited spare capacity now to supply goods and services. Uh, so when spare capacity is limited, we often get the push on investment. The government, of course, has a role to play in encouraging investment. They can lift investment by, for example, cutting corporation tax or perhaps offering other tax incentives as part of their fiscal policy. For example, fir firms might be able to write off more of their investment against tax to release some resources. I mentioned animal spirits and I think they're really important. It's a great phrase to use in an essay. The phrase comes, it's a Keynesian concept, the writings of John Maynard Keynes. He coined the notion of animal spirits. Animal spirits is that mix, that volatile mix of confidence, trust, mood, sentiment, expectations. When businesses and people are more confident, they tend to spend more, and that includes investment. However, in a downturn, in a recession, when confidence is fragile and low, individuals save more, businesses save more because the expected demand of profits aren't there and typically they cut back on production, may, off, may even lay off some workers and perhaps even postpone capital investment projects. Finally, why is investment important for the economy? Well, there's all kinds of reasons. Uh, this is a, a set of videos on aggregate demand and clearly Somebody has to make the machinery, somebody has to design the software, somebody has to build the factories. So investment is an injection of demand for what we call the capital goods industries, industries that make the capital goods. And that's a, an injection into the circular flow. Equally, investment can also help to grow your export sector. If you have investment, you can build up the capacity and, and sell the surplus overseas. There are also supply side effects of investment. New investment, new capital with associated training can lift labour productivity and lift incomes. Investment can help businesses enjoy the cost benefits from economies of scale in farming, mass production in food processing, renewable energy, etc. And again, that can make a country more competitive. So investment really is quite important on both the demand and the supply side. Okay, that was a look at investment. In our next video in this series, we'll take a quick look at government spending.